Hello, Hello folks. folks. I'm Mike DeBruzzo. And I'm Earl Dunn. And we're the, the Dollar, Dollar Training, Training Guys. guys. <laughs> what this video is going to be about today is going to be about natural canine behavior and how it's going to relate to our domesticated dogs and about understanding uh, your individual dog's behavioral problems and also how to get the most out of your dog by knowing what is, what is natural um, to him. Um, there's, a, there's a movie out there, it's been out for a very long time, so a lot of times, very good if you haven't seen it, it's called Weird Science. Uh, have, you, have you seen Weird Science? Love or? it. Love it? Great movie, you gotta see it. Right up there with Karate Kid and Goonies. Um, but anyway, in the movie, there's these two teenage kids and they get on a computer and they stick bras on their head and they use some computer program and they create uh, the perfect woman by enhancing and suppressing different characteristics to, to suit with their, their personal needs. Anyway, they press a button, smoke appears in their bathroom, and, and a woman comes out. I don't know how, how that works, but, but it happened in, in the movie. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Domestication of dogs was sort of like that, except for without the bras on people's heads and without the computers, mo mo most likely. Um, or maybe it was. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know where I'm going at this. Anyway, Earl's going to go on the board and show us something, all right? And th this is going to make things a little clearer than my stupid example, all right? <laughs> okay, so in this chart, basically what we have here is the full spectrum of most canine natural behaviors. Um, what we're going to have down on this end is going to be more flight-based stuff where the dog's trying to avoid being killed. Down on this end of the spectrum, we're going to be talking with more like predatory behaviors or actually doing the killing. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that fall in each one of these categories. We broke this major category into some subcategories down here. There's tons of subcategories, but we tried to focus on some of the majority of um, the major ones, the more common ones. This system or this continuum should help you classify and understand your individual dog. Yeah, for example, let's take some typical breeds of dogs and we can get an idea of how they've been sort of manipulated to serve, to serve a function. Let's take a, a pointer, for example. Um, hunters, they selectively bred or, chose, or chose, chose pointers, whether probably without a bra on top of their head and a computer. <laughs> um, by, by selecting pointers that um, had a strong instinct to actually search, you know, ser search, for, search for birds. You took them outside, right away they started searching, and a strong desire to stalk an eye, which is once they actually found it, what do they do? They, yeah, they, they kind of point. But from there, kind of this predatory instinct sort of kind of, it's not very enhanced at that point. They didn't want them, they wouldn't have wanted a pointer that goes around and is, and is then chasing after, chasing after the birds and tearing them apart and you know, killing and shaking them, di dissecting them. So you can see Earl's taking a little red marker there and showing how they're suppressed. So the, you know, the green obviously represents enhanced, red represents um, suppressed. Now let's take another breed just to show you how a little bit of manipulation can make a dog for a whole nother purpose. Let's take a collie, which was bred right for, you know, shepherds would use them to sort of keep, keep the sheep in line and control them and, and eyeball them and chase them around and keep, keep them in one spot. So what Earl did here is what he's going to do is, yeah, they didn't really have to have an enhanced um, ability to search, but they did have a good ability. They wanted the, the stalk and eye instincts to be very strong to control those sheep and, and move them all over the place and to chase them around. But again, they didn't want them grabbing and biting the sheep and killing them and shaking them and dissecting. That would be very, very bad. Um, now, you can take uh, you know, a type of like herding type breed that's a little bit different, um, like maybe a healer, which had to use, which had to you know, control much larger li livestock. Um, and what Earl did is yeah, he erased the suppression on the grab and bite. So they were probably allowed to nip a little bit more at them, at, at, the, at the cattle's heel to keep them moving around. So a little bit of manipulation, you got a dog that served a different purpose. Now, let's go more towards these hunting dogs and we take something like a catch dog, which could be one of these old southern bulldogs they use to catch wild boar when they go hunting. And these hunters use them to go 
after the bore found to grab and hold on to these bores. So they have to have a very enhanced grab and bite, um, um, you know, in, in instinct at that at that point. Um, and so that made that dog better for that purpose. And they actually probably, if we, you know, if we looked at this, probably not a very strong stalking eye. They probably just went right to the chase and grabbed, it, you know, and grabbed onto it. And you see, this isn't an exact science. Um, now say something like a terrier. Um, terriers are they bred for? Go and kill all the rats. Go and kill all the rats in, in the barn. Even if it's way more than you would ever need to be able to actually eat, they still want to keep doing it. So they usually have a pretty enhanced predatory instinct almost across the board. So you can see how different manipulations um, make breeds of dogs that served different purposes in the beginning. Now if we want to go completely across, you know, something completely opposite of these, we could take some of these flock guarding breeds that weren't chasing anything. They were actually guarding some of these some of these animals that you know some of the other you know you know farmers' dogs were chasing around. And they may actually have all these predatory instincts you know suppressed, you know, to the point where they don't really want to chase after any of these sheep, but they had a really strong or enhanced um, instinct to actually defend. Um, so that could be, you know, simple, a simple example of something completely different. So you can plug all kinds of breeds and get a general idea for what most breeds, how they've been manipulated for, for a purpose. Like a German Shepherd is a good example of something without us even having to play around with the board, where we're going to have lots of enhancements across the board because they were, you know, used, you know, to be, you know, protective and to also do a lot of stuff, you know, police work and, and herding that involves a lot of the predatory instinct sort of stuff. Now, from, you know, from a behavioral problem point of view, you'll see nowadays that not a lot of dogs are really bred for work and purposes anymore. They still are, but you actually get a lot of dogs um, that are bred for puppy mills or breeding them to, to make money, or backyard breeders are breeding them just to breed them. So what happens, is this stuff doesn't become so important anymore and sometimes your problems are in best case scenarios or just you have a dog that's actually acting normal for their particular breed they just don't have an outlet for it but sometimes someone may get a dog and it doesn't even do what the breed standard said it's supposed to do so here's way on this end over here we have flight avoidance which in most domesticated dogs is actually normally suppressed a lot you know, if you could compare it to, you know, a wolf or a coyote or one of these wild canines, they're usually pretty flighty. They're not going to stick around for stuff. They're going to be pretty fearful with different things. So once breeders stop paying attention to suppressing this, it's very possible to get dogs that really don't have much of a suppressed flight and avoidance behavior. You can also get dogs that were meant to be lap dogs originally, be very friendly with kids and sit on your lap all day and have no problems that originally had very suppressed instincts to be defensive or to be socially com competitive. Now suddenly no one's paying attention to this stuff anymore and we have dogs that they're much more likely to be defensive or socially or socially competitive. So we can go all day long using this chart and plug not only um, different breeds but individual cases that go against the norm of, of, of the actual breeds into here. So hopefully with this chart, it'll help to teach you um, how to troubleshoot what is normal for this dog or what you're going to expect is going to be normal from this dog and also to understand what's really not normal for this dog that we're going to have to work with and make, make the most of, which is ultimately going to help you in moving along this system to training your dog the, the right way. Anything, anything to add, Earl? No, I think that's it. Yeah, kind of a lot here, but I hope it's a pretty important video. All right, so um, until next time, I'm Mike DeBruzzo. And I'm Earl Dunn. And we're the Dog Trading Guys.